Minister has kindly agreed to answer a few questions. Um, I think I'll take the prerogative and, and ask the first if I can. Uh, you, uh, you talked about regional architecture building and, and um, sort of Indonesia's vision of, a, of, a, of what that architecture would look like. What's the, or is this on? No. no. What's the appropriate role for the United States in that architecture and, and are we fulfilling that role? Well, I know that recently uh, there's been lots of discussion there's been lots of discussion about the, the manner of United States engagement in our region, in, in, in Southeast Asia, certainly in the broader East Asia region as a whole. I'm, a, I'm one of those uh, people who believe that there is really nothing broken to be fixed. I know that there's some are quite engaged and quite anxious to ensure the continued engagement, so-called continued engagement of the United States in our region. But we believe, I believe, that the United States engagement in our region has been a fact of life. It has been very much engaged in the region. Uh, but now, uh, with the fluidity in our region, with the increasing prominence of certain other countries in the region, of course, we need to uh, factor that into account and uh, to, to how to ensure that the United States continued engagement in the region is, is done in a way that is uh, mutually reinforcing and mutually beneficial. And as I said, as I tried to allude just now, not to create a self-fulfilling and unnecessary assumption that there must be some kind of a competitive uh, dynamics to the engagement. And, and I think so far uh, we have witnessed uh, this has been uh, doable. Uh, we have been witnessing, the, for example, the, uh, over the past year, a tremendous acceleration in the United States uh, uh, engagement in our, in, our, in our region. For example, the accession to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation by the United States. I, I do recall that uh, that has been a process that has been going on for some time. But the new U.S. administration, the pre administration of President Obama, uh, added a new momentum to that effort. And uh, of course, beyond that, we've had the ASEAN-U.S. Uh, leader summit last uh, year in Singapore and we have to have one next week in New York. And uh, now we have the prospect of United States engagement in the East Asia Summit process as well. So I think all in all, we have a very good, well-calibrated US engagement in the region in, uh, in its most uh, multi-dimensional form. And I wanted to emphasize that aspect as well, the multi-dimensional nature of US engagement because I must confess that in the recent past, and, and not until recently, uh, one tend to be more familiar with US security uh, perspective and engagement in the region. When in fact, uh, for most uh, countries in the region, the priority concern has been how to pursue uh, the, the pursuit of uh, development and, 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 and economic welfare. And uh, I, I do believe that that's where the U.S. strength actually lies in terms of its uh, economic uh, possibilities that it can offer. And I made reference also in, in, the, in my remarks about the soft power that the U.S. can employ in our region. Uh, so, but only all, all in all, as I said, nothing is broken uh, that needs fixing, but we can do with more nurturing, we can do with more investing in our relationship. And uh, Indonesia is pleased to f with the fact that uh, this comprehensive partnership that we are building with the United States is important not only bilaterally, but it is also having a dividend uh, in the region as a whole because we have been able to facilitate one another's uh, mutual interests and partnership in the bigger picture of the region. Thank you. We'll turn it over to questions. It, it, if you can, uh, we've got some, some microphones that will come to you. If, uh, when you're, if you can identify yourself and your, and your affiliation uh, and then ask your question. Right here. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I'm a, a reporter with Phoenix TV. My name is Ching Yi Chang. And uh, I'd like, uh, following the, uh, uh, Mr. Freeman's question, uh, some analysis that uh, uh, say that uh, right now, US actually is trying to balance in the power with China with ASEAN. Uh, how do you think about that? Thank you. Uh, this is what I made, sought to make reference to when I say that, uh, in our view, it is not inevitable uh, that somehow our region will be trapped in a like, uh, competitive 
Cold War type of environment where the gain of one must be at the expense of the other. I think the rise of China, the increasing prominence of China, is a fact of life. It is uh, something that we must all embrace and celebrate, as a matter of fact, because Indonesia is uh, uh, benefiting as well with China's increasing economic prominence uh, in all areas. And uh, we do believe that it is possible to develop a more win-win, mutually reinforcing kind of engagement. Uh, we use the term dynamic equilibrium uh, to describe the state of affairs that we uh, envisage, where basically it is marked by an absence of a profoundian power, as I said before, but not by way of containment, not by way of the classic uh, uh, development of balance of power to ensure one, uh, the rise of one is neutralized by, by a group of countries uh, coming together, but really by emphasizing uh, the fact that our engagement in the region is a multifaceted one, uh, there is not one scorecard, only the military political scorecard, but we have the environmental issues, the economic issues, sociocultural issues, and they all have their own dynamics. And, and uh, we feel that actually we can have this uh, a more win-win, mutually reinforcing equilibrium. Equilibrium does not connote necessarily a perfect balance, uh, but a, a state of affairs where there's some predictability in relationship. And, and here, uh, I think the role of ASEAN will be key. We may not be the most uh, powerful group of countries, but so far we have been the one that's probably most acceptable to m the major players in our region. Uh, but recently I know that this discussion has been somewhat oversimplified with reference to certain situation in our region. Uh, some, someone may, would have mentioned the South China Sea, for example, etc or the broader maritime issues, because we've had a number of uh, tensions recently in our region to do with maritime affairs, I'm afraid, including uh, my own country uh, uh, with some of our neighbors. But there, are, there is a fact of life. Uh, we need to manage these kind of issues in a good way. Just here, up, up front. Good morning. Alex Feldman from the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. Good to see you again, Mr. Thanks. Minister. Um, one of the pillars that you mentioned uh, is economics and trade, and you mentioned that should be one of the areas that we focus on and, and can help the Indonesian people uh, with American business opportunities. I guess my question for you is, is to give us a little preview of what your thinking is coming in to your discussions today about how to expand that. Given the size of uh, our two countries and given the importance of, of Indonesia, um, the trade relationship, the investment relationship could be much stronger. Um, and one of the things that we've talked to uh, Pakita about is uh, other countries in the region have given uh, incentives for investment and for uh, increasing the trade relationships, and Indonesia has been reticent to do that uh, for various reasons, but I wonder if that's going to change. I, I think you, you, you describe it as I would describe it as well. Uh, there's plenty more room for us to be even better in our trade and investment relations. Uh, precisely the kind of mechanism that we are launching today, uh, the, the, uh, the Joint Ministerial Commission and the various working groups that we have established, the, uh, the very intensified process of dialogue and, and, and talks over the past year, for example, uh, I think has really put the, the issue really to the fore. How can uh, United States uh, business people uh, really enhance their collaboration and, 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 and partnership with Indonesia in the trade and investment areas. We are, we are mindful that quite a few of uh, a lot can be done on our part in, in terms of creating the requisite conducive climate for investment and, 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 and trade promotion. But on the other hand, I hope also likewise our uh, partners and friends in the United States can also become more uh, alert to the potentials that Indonesia offers uh, beyond the traditional sectors, uh, energy and, 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 and all that. And uh, especially, I think, increasingly, though what is being recognized just now is that when we look at our region in, in Asia Pacific, East Asia, um, you know, it's, it's best not to put all our eggs in one basket in terms of doing your India and your China. And because Indonesia, India, and China, we are all integrating uh, as uh, economies. Uh, so we can do in India, we can do China by also having engagement with Indonesia. 
And, and this is what is most wonderful about our situation in the region at the moment, with the various integration uh, efforts, ASEAN among itself, ASEAN plus one with India, with China, with Japan, with Korea. It makes it uh, possible and more efficient for uh, business people to be able to have a foothold uh, in one of the uh, countries, hopefully Indonesia, and you can do the region as well. And by the way, while I'm on the subject matter, I also want to emphasize how we are trying to make Jakarta increasingly the diplomatic capital for our region. Because as you are aware, of course, the ASEAN Secretariat is very much located in Indonesia, in Jakarta. Uh, and all the paraphernalia that comes with the Secretariat in terms of the various satellite uh, uh, organizations. And, and uh, so we are very keen to have Indonesia or Jakarta especially like a one-stop uh, for our friends to do business in, 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 in the region. The, the, the woman just there. Um, I'm Daisy Liu from Conical Phillips. Thank you for your remarks this morning. Um, I was wondering whether you can share with us some insights on what will be the topics that will be discussed next week on the second US ASEAN dialogue. Thank you. Uh, as is natural, as is normal uh, in, in event of this type, normally what we have two, two main cluster of issues. Uh, one is a, a review of ASEAN-US relations, uh, where we are in terms of the, the uh, dialogue partnership between the between United States and ASEAN. And of course, there will be also the second cluster, namely a review of international, uh, global, and regional issues. I think the first, the first uh, the first cluster, the review of uh, U.S.-ASEAN relations, I think all of us can be quite satisfied with where we are compared to where we were, for example, last year. Uh, TAC, uh, East Asia Summit, now United States about to, 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 be, to be invited into the ES, ES as well. And the fact that we are having the leaders meeting uh, is, is uh, reaffirmation of the continued significance or importance that the uh, United States is attaching to ASEAN. So I think the review bit should be quite uh, almost celebratory in nature, I think, uh, in terms of uh, uh, congratulating ourselves that things are moving well, but we must do better. Uh, the, uh, the second cluster, the review of international and, and uh, regional issues, I think when we are looking at the regional uh, calendar or regional situation in East Asia and Southeast Asia, it, it will not surprise me, it will not surprise me if issues such as the uh, uh, elections that are to be held in some of the, uh, at least one of our uh, member states of ASEAN, uh, upcoming election, I think in Myanmar, may come up. Uh, uh, it's not formally in the agenda, but it would not be surprising if the United States uh, choose to raise the subject matter. And, and I think our, our friends and, uh, from Myanmar has always been uh, forthcoming and ready to engage in this kind of uh, discussion. Uh, of course, the situation on the Korean Peninsula, uh, while not quite Southeast Asia, obviously, but uh, ASEAN member states have a, a valid concern about where we are uh, in the, on that issue, especially the, the fact that the ASEAN Regional Forum, uh, as the premier uh, security forum for our region, is probably the only forum where all the six uh, party talks countries are sitting together. And, and so the uh, Korean Peninsula development will be key. The, uh, the uh, elections in some of our neighbor countries will be important as well. Uh, we will be also keen to, to hear uh, from the United States about their efforts on the Middle East, for example. Uh, this is obviously beyond the region type of uh, concern. But uh, as Indonesia, we have been very much uh, uh, appreciative of the, the singular effort, the strong effort the United States administration is putting into the Middle East uh, peace process just now, relatively early on in its uh, administration's uh, tenure, uh, quite a contrast to the past. And uh, I will be keen also later on today to, to, to hear from uh, Secretary Clinton on where we are uh, and, and how a country like Indonesia can make its own modest uh, contribution uh, to ensure uh, progress in this kind of efforts.